We're given an autonomous differential equation. Part A, we're asked to find the equilibrium solutions. Part B, we're asked to find the critical points and sketch the phase diagram. Part C, we're asked to classify the critical points as stable or unstable. And then part D, we're asked to find the limit as t approaches infinity of x of t when x of zero equals 0 0.5 and x of zero equals 2.5. For a quick review, an autonomous differential equation is in the form of dx dt equals f of x, meaning dx dt is equal to a function of only the dependent variable x. Equilibrium solutions occur where dx dt is equal to zero, and the critical points are the points on the x-axis where dx dt or f of x is equal to zero. And then finally, if dx dt is greater than zero, x is increasing, and if dx dt is less than zero, x is decreasing. Let's first determine the equilibrium solutions by setting dx dt equal to zero and solving for x. This gives us zero is equal to the quantity x minus one times the quantity x minus two times x squared. Because the right side is factored, we can see these solutions are x equals one, or x equals two, or x equals zero. These are the three equilibrium solutions. This also indicates the critical points are the points on the x-axis, where x equals zero, x equals one, and x equals two. To begin the phase diagram, we sketch the x-axis or vertical axis, and then mark off the location of the critical points, which again are where x equals zero, x equals one, and x equals two. The next step is to determine the sine of dx dt in each of the subintervals. So let's use the test values of x equals, let's say three, 1.5, 0 0.5, and negative one. We can use any value in each subinterval as a test value. Now assuming the equations in the form of dx dt equals f of x, we determine f of three, f of 1.5, f of 0 0.5, and f of negative one. We actually don't need to find the exact function value. We need to determine whether it's positive or negative. f of three is equal to dx dt when x equals three, indicating f of three is equal to the quantity three minus one times the quantity three minus two times the square of three. We have a positive times a positive times the square of a positive, which is positive or greater than zero. This indicates this indicates when x of zero is greater than two, as t approaches infinity, x of t increases, and therefore we draw an upward arrow when x is greater than two. And now let's determine the sine of f of 1.5, which is equal to the quantity 1.5 minus one times the quantity 1.5 minus two times the square of 1.5. Well here we have a positive times a negative times the square of a positive, which is going to be negative or less than zero. This indicates when x of zero is between zero and one, as t approaches infinity, x of t is decreasing, which we indicate using a down arrow. And now let's determine the sine of f of 0 0.5. This is equal to the quantity 0 0.5 minus one times the quantity 0 0.5 minus two times the square of 0 0.5. Well here we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive, times the square of a positive, which is positive or greater than zero. This indicates when x of zero is between zero and one, as t approaches infinity, x of t is increasing, which we indicate using an up arrow. And now we need to determine the sine of f of negative one. f of negative one is equal to the quantity negative one minus one times the quantity negative one minus two times the square of negative one. Well here we have a negative times a negative, which is positive, times the square of a negative, which is also positive, resulting in a positive value, or a value greater than zero. This indicates when x of zero is less than zero, as t approaches infinity, x of t is increasing, which we indicate using an up arrow. This is the completed phase diagram. And now let's classify the critical points at x equals two, one, and zero, as stable or unstable. In order for it to be stable, the arrow above and below must both point to the critical point. If they don't, it's unstable. At x equals two, both arrows point away from the critical point, and therefore, the critical point at x equals two is unstable. Both arrows point toward the critical point at x equals one, the critical point is stable. 
and at x equals zero, only one arrow points toward the critical point, and therefore it's unstable. However, if one of the two arrows does point toward the critical point, it can also be classified as semi-stable. The critical points at x equals zero can also be labeled semi-stable. Notice that's not true for the unstable critical point at x equals two. And then finally for part D, we're asked to find the limit as t approaches infinity of x of t when x of zero is equal to 0 0.5 and x of zero equals 2.5. Let's begin with x of zero equals 0 0.5, which means the x values between zero and one, looking at the phase diagram, we can see as t approaches infinity, x of t is going to increase in approach to the equilibrium solution of x equals one, which means the limit as t approaches infinity of x of t is equal to one. Again, this is true because of the initial condition where the x value is between zero and one. Next, we have x of zero equals 2.5, which means x value is greater than two. We can see from the phase diagram, as t approaches infinity, x of t is going to increase without bound because there's no equilibrium solution above x equals two, and therefore the limit is equal to positive infinity, meaning the limit does not exist. I hope you found this helpful.